Hey YouTube, my name is Marcus and I am a big time book lover and I have decided that I wanted to join the booktube community and kind of bring my opinions and my viewpoints into the mix uh, for the most part because I feel I might be adding something that hasn't been shown yet. Uh, most of the people that represent the booktube community for the most part that I've seen are women. A lot of them are in their mid to late 20s. They gravitate towards YA and they gravitate towards, towards epic fantasies and such, which is both something that I don't gravitate to. So I kind of feel like there's maybe a little bit of a niche left in the booktube community for people like myself who are more into realistic fiction and just, you know, just in general maybe you have some other viewpoints to bring to it. It's always nice to have discussion about books. I love talking about books. I love watching other booktubers. Uh, I've already commented on a lot of them, so I thought that was my time to join myself and bring my two cents to the table. So before I go into talking a little bit more about books, I really quickly wanted to mention that I did have a YouTube channel in the past that was mostly political and social. And I really in that time frame when I had that YouTube channel really had to learn that the moment you have any kind of opinion, you're gonna make enemies. That's just the way life works. And especially on YouTube, a lot of times people, when they don't agree with your opinion, they can be very strong-minded about letting you know that they don't agree with you. Especially when, like me, you have. <laughs> probably some unpopular opinions. So those of you who are like, oh, he's back on YouTube, I have decided I'm not going to be talking about political or social things anymore. I'm going to be talking about books because that is one of my first true loves. And the other thing I might do eventually when I get time to sort through all the videos I have, I'm going to start updating my travel guide videos as well. But for now, I'm only going to do booktube contributions. All right, sorry for having to change the angle for you guys, but my camera keeps falling down from the way I had it popped before. So now you're gonna see this angle in which I can't highlight my beautiful books. <laughs> all right, so because I haven't talked about books yet at all, and you guys are thinking, okay, he said he wants to join booktube and he hasn't talked about books at all, I figured in my introductory video, I would do my April wrap-up. In April, I read a whole of four books, which I think is amazing. As I said, I don't think you have to read tens and twenties and thirties of books a month to consider yourself a good reader or to consider yourself somebody who has valid opinions on books. I definitely have months where I can read up to 15 books and then I have two, maybe I'll go one or two or three months where I don't even pick up a book. But that doesn't mean that I don't think of myself as an avid reader. So this month, four books. Let's talk about them. The first one is The Museum of Extraordinary Things by Alice Huffman. This book takes place in the turn of the century, turn of the last century. New York City about and the main character is this young woman who gets adopted by a man who owns a freak show and it kind of talks about how this freak show and the turn of the century and people's opinions are changing about how living with these kind of people and if it's okay and how she manages to survive in that. I, I thought the writing was extraordinary sorry for the pun i really enjoyed the fact that this is a storyline that i've never read about it's definitely something new can i prop this oh yeah that both was really amazing i think that the double perspective worked really well i'm actually not somebody who enjoys like multiple perspective stories that much but i think in this book it was done pretty well the only thing I would say is, oh, one more thing that I really liked. The other thing I really liked is that the author integrated actual turn of the last century events 
that occurred in New York City and wove them into the book, which I also thought was done magnificently. Yeah. But I would say the story could have been a little bit shorter. And the ending, I felt, was just kind of blah. So definitely something I would recommend if that sounds like something you're interested in, but not something I would say you have to go, absolutely go out of your way to invest in if that storyline doesn't, you know, really sound like something that's up your alley. So yeah, I would say it's probably a, th a three-star rating. The next book... The next two books would probably be about the same. Let's go about this one first. The next book is called Forbidden, and this is by Tabitha Suzuma. For those of you who don't know the what this book is about, basically, it, I actually had the feeling that this was kind of a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but on top of that, it also instead of a boy and a girl who come from separate families who don't like each other, they're actually brother and sister. And they live in a ha household where they kind of have to be the adults. Both of the parents are either absent or just completely worthless. And they kind of take on the role of mo the mother and the father to the younger siblings. And then they discover that they fall in love with each other. I actually really, really enjoyed how the author handled this topic. So I think incest is one of those last taboos that I still think society in general feels very comfortable, you know, bad-mouthing. You know, I think overall we're trying to become a more progressive people and become more open-minded people. And there's not that many things that we still feel are taboos and things that it's okay to shame people for, but incest is still one of those things that the vast majority of people on the planet are just going to be like, ew, that's gross, they're nasty. Uh, personally, <laughs> you know, even though I am not interested in having an incestuous relationship with anybody in my family, I don't know. I have to say, I think a grown man and a woman or grown, two grown women, or two grown men, whatever, if they happen to be related, as long as they're not having children, I kind of want to say, if it's consensual, I would like to think that I'm open-minded enough to say, you know, be happy. So, the part that I, what I'm trying to say is why I really, why I really liked about this author is that she wrote about incest in a way that didn't make it just nasty and negative and oh we're ashamed of who we are she wrote it in a way that kind of made the reader feel like hey take a minute be a little open-minded these are two consenting adults okay well here they're teenagers but in theory two consenting adults and they just happen to fall in love and they just happen to be related and you know take a moment to try to be open-minded to this situation. And I appreciated that she took that route because I don't think that is a route that you really find taken a lot when it comes to this topic. Having said that, though, if you took away the fact that this book, The Love Interest, relates to incest, it's really just a cheesy YA romance novel. It's not overly cleverly written. The plot lines aren't overly complex. The language isn't overly complex. So really, if you're going to read this book, you're reading it only for how incest is handled for it. But yeah, I did enjoy it. I think it was a quick read. So for me, it's like, is it a 3.5? Yeah, it's a 3.5. The next book... Plus one, oh my god, and can we all just take a moment to look at the beauty that is this cover? <laughs> this was a complete impulse buy. I saw another booktuber, like, just kind of dangle it, like, she didn't even really talk about the book, but she just pulled it out and she's like, plus one, and I saw this cover and I was like, I must have this book. I don't even care what it's about, nothing. So... 
Plus One by Elizabeth Fama. This is a story about a young woman and a young man who live in a dystopian future where half the world's population is required to live during the night and the other half of the population is required to live during the day and they're not allowed to mix. So night people are only allowed to be out at night, day people are only allowed to be out at day. Really, really enjoyed the writing. The writing was superb and I really enjoyed all of the twists and turns. Usually I'm somebody, I, do, I have read a lot of books, usually twists and turns I can predict them two or three chapters ahead of time, like, oh, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen. Not saying that that always like ruins my enjoyment of a book. I can sometimes figure out what the twist is and still enjoy the book. But here, I would say 80% of the twists, I was like, whoa, I did not see that coming. And I really enjoyed the fact that this author did that. Like, I was, was able to kind of surprise me in that writing. I love the dynamics of the relationship. I thought it was very cute. Usually I'm not somebody who's really into romance or drawn to romance. So all those are the things I really enjoyed about it. However, the book had one serious flaw in the plot, which really kind of hurt for me the book. And one thing that just me personally, I would have preferred to have been different, but it's her book and she's allowed to write it the way she wants, but I think it would have just made it a better book. The thing that I think she should have gone a little bit further with is because it's a dystopian future and you have night people and day people and like based off of the cover, I kind of had anticipated that nighttime people would look different from daytime people or somehow they would have different characteristics or something but literally they were all they all looked the same you could uh, the own there's no way of differentiating nighttime people from daytime people except that they have to wear like a badge and if they happen to get checked and they're in the wrong time then they could get in trouble for it but other than that there was no differentiating them which I kind of was like that to me I feel like she could have gone ahead and made it more obvious the other thing that and this is a big, sorry, this is a little bit of a, I don't know if this is a spoiler, if it's just kind of giving away, that's not a spoiler. One of the things I thought really hurt the novel was, in the beginning of the book, they made it sound so extreme, how night people weren't allowed to be outside during the day, and day people weren't allowed to be outside during the night. And, and in the beginning of the novel, she kind of said how, it made travel very difficult because obviously you only have a certain amount of time in a, that you can go a certain distance before you have to get back so that you can be inside when your time of the day is over. But then later in the novel, it's like you can, you can go camping and as long as you're inside of your tent, when it's not your time of the day, then, you're, then it's okay, you can't get in trouble. And that to me started feel, kind of like breaking down. It kind of became really flimsy. I'm like... Well, then I could just constantly carry around a tent on my back and just kind of like, oh, the sun's coming up. I'm a night person. Pop up my tent and get into my tent. You know, because in the beginning, they tried to make it seem like it was so, the night people were so cut off from the day people. And how, if they even dare to see a little bit of sunlight, then they're already in trouble. So some of the world building really kind of fell apart. And that really kicked down the overall enjoyment of this book. So I'm giving this one also a 3.5. And the last book I finished in the month of April is this one right here. Uh, the Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffen... I'm really scared to say her last name because I feel like it's going to be offensive. Niffen Nigger. Niffen... 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 Don't... Please don't kick my me off thing. I don't... I don't know... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, this novel to me was superb. Superb. It's marketed as a romance, and I've actually seen a lot of people, um, the people I've seen on BookTube who have reviewed this have ended up actually really disliking it. 
And I think part of the reason that they've ended up disliking it is that it's marketed as a romance. And this book is not a romance. Uh, if you read it as a romance, I think you're going to be really disappointed by the book because there is a lot of cringy aspects in terms of how the main female character and the main male character come together. Um, as it says in the, in the title, the man, he is a time traveler. And the wife, they kind of meet in all these different combinations of time. So there's times when he's really old and she's really young, or she's really old and he's really young, and they just keep meaning each other in this way. And then, and then there are aspects that can be kind of cringy because you're like, oh, in this moment she's really young and he's really old, but they already know they're going to get married and it's kind of creepy and stuff like that. So I think if you read it as a romance novel, you're going to be really, you're not going to enjoy this book. But if you read it in a more scientific way, I think it is so clever how she integrated this idea of time and the consequences of it and destiny versus free will and can we change things if should we change things there's like all these things that she talks about that she interweaves in that and that is done magnificently like i really have to applaud the author for it and she's also not afraid to portray people in a realistic manner so one of the things i said i really and i said right in the beginning of this incredibly long video is that i like melancholic 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 melancholy i like i tend to like books that are more on a melancholy note and more on a real note i don't like books so it's just everybody's everybody's happy and everybody's friendly and everybody gets along and there's a happy ending i just don't enjoy that because it's not real akin to real life you know we're all flawed beings we all do things sometimes that are selfish we all do things sometimes that are unkind we all you know that's just part of human nature and then there's other times when you do things that are really selfless and that are really friendly and very kind you know and i think she did a really good job of portraying aspects of humanity that are maybe things that we don't like admitting that we have within us and she wasn't scared to be like, no, this is how humans really are. So that is another thing I really appreciated about this author. Uh, there are a couple of things that I didn't enjoy. I'm not, I don't think it's worth really going into. And that kind of kept it from being a five star. But it definitely is a 4.5 star read for me. And I definitely highly recommend it. But I'm telling you guys right now, go into it reading it as a maybe a sci-fi and not as a romance if you read it as a sci-fi i think you would really enjoy this book if you read it as a romance yes you'll probably be disappointed so that is my incredibly long please welcome me to booktube video i hope you guys enjoyed that and i'm going to try to be uploading videos mondays tuesdays i'm going to try to do booktube videos and then maybe once I feel more comfortable with it or to see if it's actually rolling and working or not, then maybe later in the week I'll try to do a travel guide video. So that's it. Take care. Bye.